I've been testing a lot of new drugstore makeup behind the scenes off of YouTube recently. Either I have shared them in quick Instagram or TikTok videos, maybe I haven't gotten around to sharing them yet, or I tried them and didn't share them because I didn't like them. So in this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on new affordable makeup that I've been testing that I really like, some products that I really don't like, as well as an updated review on a product that I shared with y'all here on YouTube last week. So we're just gonna get straight into it, but first, if you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. All right, let's start things off on a positive note. So I've been on the hunt for a good drugstore contouring product for a very long time. Either powder or cream, it really didn't matter. I just felt like so many drugstore contour products were really just bronzers. They were all just a little too warm. And contour, by definition, is supposed to be mimicking the shadows in the hollows of your face to create that definition. And those shadows are never going to be a warm brown. <laughs> but I do feel like at the drugstore, the terms bronzer and contour have been so muddled together that we just end up only getting bronzers. But about two weeks ago, I was browsing the aisles at Ulta and this caught my eye. This is the Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. I have the shade medium. Now again, Again, we're using the name bronzer, but at least this shade is absolutely a cool toned brown, making it appropriate to use as a contour. So I've been testing this over the last two weeks and this is absolutely my new favorite drugstore contour. For my skin tone, this shade is absolutely perfect. It is cool without leaning gray, which is another problem that you have with a lot of contour products. <laughs> it blends so easily. It's incredibly pigmented, so you really don't need a lot. I use a smaller stippling brush to apply this. I just find that that's the best way to blend out cream products. Mine is from AOA Studio on shopmissay.com. And you can see this goes down pretty dark, but I do get to blend this out, make it look a little bit more diffused. Even being a cream product, I find that this lasts really well on my skin, which is combination. It has been really hot lately. We've been hitting 111, 113 temperatures, but setting my look with the Milani Make It Last Spray, everything just looks beautiful. This stays even and blended, never patchy. There are four shades of this Ultra Cream Bronzer at Ulta, and I will say that the deep deepest shade is actually deep. That's another problem with trying to find contour and bronzer shades at the drugstore. Sometimes they like tap out at medium and I'm like, <laughs> now I can't say for sure with all the other shades because I haven't swatched them, but they do look cool toned, like just in the packaging. So with how well this worked for me, I would go on a limb and say that you can probably use those other shades as a true contouring product as well. This is only $8. And again, I feel like this is gonna last me so long because I'm only tapping on a bit of product every time I use it. So I'm incredibly stoked about this find because I really have been trying bronzer after bronzer, hoping that I can find a contour product, but they just like don't don't exist at the drugstore. I don't know. I would love any other suggestions though. If you have a favorite contouring product at the drugstore and it's cooler toned, let me know in the comments. I will probably order it as soon as I see your comment. <laughs> now moving on to the first new drugstore makeup product that's disappointed me recently. I've said several times how much I love LA Girl eyeshadows, the powder ones. I think they're making some of the best drugstore eyeshadow palettes out there right now. So I was really excited when they released their new Sunkissed Glow Longwear Shadow Sticks. Uh, but they fell flat and I really tried to make these work. I've tried to apply these now and make them work like three or four different times. So the pros are that they are incredibly pigmented, beautiful colors. However, the way that I use eyeshadow sticks is I apply them all over the lid, I blend them out. Now the problem <laughs> with these is that they're so long wear, they actually set like right away and there's just no blending them out. Sorry, I'm flipping you off. <laughs> there's just no blending them out to make them look good. Now with that said, once they're set, like they're not going anywhere. <laughs> These are absolutely long wear crayons. I just find them hard to work with. Now, if you work fast enough, you might be able to get a little bit of a blend, but with that, I don't find it very even. Like I can still very much see the initial line that I drew. It's hard to get it to look soft. You know what I mean? And it sets within like five seconds, literally. <laughs> so these were definitely not winners for me, especially because of how much I love the e.l.f. No Budge Shadow Sticks, which is what I'm wearing today. Those are so creamy and blendable, but once you give them, I don't know, like 
five minutes, <laughs> then they become budge proof. And to me, I like to go in with a brush and I like to blend out the edges and these like, impossible to blend with a brush. You do have to use your fingers. And I just find that you have to kind of rub hard also, which doesn't feel good on the eyes. How I'm salvaging these and how they do work well for me is if I take like a skinny eyeliner brush and load up the brush and use it as eyeliner. So that's how I'm using these right now, just to not have to throw away a full product. But these are not something that I'm gonna seek out to replace once I am finished with them, if I get to that point or if they dry out. Back on a more positive note, one new drugstore makeup product that I've been loving and using constantly is the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blush. Now, if you've watched my videos for a while, then you probably know that I have hated every e.l.f. putty product that I've ever tried. <laughs> they just do not get along with me or my skin type whether it was the face primer or the eye primer, like the original putty texture just does not play well with my face. But I went out on a limb and got this new luminous putty blush, which is a completely different texture and formula. It doesn't have that like thick, feel to it. And really that makes all the difference. It's more like slippy and definitely thinner than the original formula. I have the shade Maui, which is this beautiful medium pink, and it does have very, very fine gold shimmer to it. Just like with my cream contour, I use a stipple brush to apply this and it goes on so beautifully. Great pigmentation, blends out like a dream. And when I do use the stipple brush to apply, the shimmer is so subtle. It does not look like a glitter bomb, which I'm super happy about. And the finish on this is so beautiful and bouncy and radiant. It doesn't give you that like wet, dewy looking kind of finish. It gives you just enough of a luminous finish where your skin does look slightly highlighted. When applied in an even layer with my stipple brush, I find that this lasts all day on me. No smearing, no patchiness or fading. So this is the first e.l.f. putty product win for me. Honestly, I think it's so different that they probably could have gotten away with not calling it part of the putty family at all. But because in general, their putty products are popular, it probably helps them more than it hurts them. But if you're like me and you do not like the texture of their other putty products, I would say give this one a shot. It's only $7. The next makeup disappointment was so sad for me because I love Milani. They are one of my favorite drugstore makeup brands, but their highly rated anti-gravity mascara just did not live up to its name for me. And here's the thing, it is actually highly rated. It has like four and a half stars on Ulta.com, but there are a few reviews that do mention the same problems that I have with this product that just make this a no-go for me in terms of everyday wear. Now I did apply this today because I want you to see how this starts out. It actually starts out looking really, really good. It adds noticeable length, pretty good lift, and there's a little bit of clumpiness, which it does claim against, but the brush is separating enough where I can usually comb them out. However, throughout the day, my lashes definitely start falling, which I think is funny because it's called anti-gravity and gravity's taken over my lashes for sure. Even at this point, which is I don't know, it's been like an hour since I put this on. I'm definitely seeing less lift already. But my biggest problem with this mascara that just makes me completely bypass it when I'm applying my makeup is that it flakes like crazy. It is a drier mascara, which I don't mind drier mascaras. I, I do find them to be more lightweight for my straight lashes, but there is a flip side to that where if it's too dry, it often flakes. And with this one, I am constantly checking and finding flakes under my eyes. For me, even if the rest of my face looks awesome, if I have mascara fallout under my eyes, I think it just looks so messy. And then of course you go to brush it away and hopefully, you can grab it without it turning into a black smear, but that's not always the case. So this product just does not check the boxes that it claims to, at least on my lashes. And my lashes are pretty dense, but short and straight. So maybe if you had finer lashes, this could work a little better, but it just does not hold up my lashes. And again, heartbroken because I love Milani, but sometimes they can't all be winners. In my last YouTube video, I talked about the new Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink Liquid Lipsticks. I did a test, shared my thoughts, and compared them to the Urban Decay Vice Lip Bonds. And by the end of that video, I did have a very good opinion of this product, but now that I've been wearing them more consistently and like in everyday life, I do have some updates that I wanted to share. I do still like them, don't worry. <laughs> in fact, at this point, I'd say that these are my favorite long-lasting liquid lipsticks at the drugstore, even more so than the matte versions. 
One thing that I mentioned in that video is that these were not 100% transfer proof like they claim to be. And the biggest problem that I personally had was the transfer onto the chin after eating. Cause if they transfer onto like cups or straws, like that's not a big deal if the makeup still looks good on my face, but having the lipstick in areas that are not the lips, that's a problem. <laughs> so after playing around with these, I realized that out of the tube, you actually get too much product on the applicator. This is an incredibly thin liquid lipstick and it's supposed to be a one swipe product, but even with the amount that comes out just straight out of the tube, I found that wiping off the excess, it does take off a lot of product and still you're left with enough for full coverage color in one swipe. So once I started just using less product, which did not affect the pigmentation, I stopped having the problem of the pigment transferring as much onto cups, but no transfer onto my chin while eating. Now, if you watched my video, then you know that throughout the day, even after 12 hours, if I pressed my fingers to my lips, a lot of product would still come off. Not a lot, but noticeable amounts. <laughs> But when you apply less, the product actually sets fully like it's supposed to. There's like one little fleck. So now that I figured that out, these are like S tier products for me. These are also so much more comfortable than the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Liquid Lipsticks. So definitely some new all time favorites in my book. So tell me, have you tried any of these products? Did you love them? Did you not? Let me know in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to the Nuggest Nest. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I compare those Maybelline Vinyl Ink Liquid Lipsticks against the Urban Decay Lip Bonds. They may be more than dupes. I'll see you over there. Bye.